Touch, the tool by Neil, type system, and HPC. I'm going to talk about how we use those to just build the system. Uh, the core, it's a stack, which is the current screen, visible screens, hidden workplaces, tags, and uh, basically a cursor into a list, which is uh, the current element, elements to the left, elements to the right. It's uh, polymorphic so that we can test this thing without actually instantiating an X server, and we just plug in a different type and still test the structure. So we never actually operate clients directly. It's a window manager, it's about the shape of the window, it's not the windows themselves. And it's pure. Uh, there's a mapping, nice mapping of this list with cursors into multi-head displays that basically fall out as multiple cursors into the structure. So for some reason, tiling window managers don't really support Cinerama well or multiple heads, um, which is strange, but uh, we do, so that's something nice. Very simple API, you create a new window manager, you peek into the window manager data type, extract whatever elements are currently visible, you can index it to get back all the elements on the current workspace, and you can insert and delete windows. So that's basically the API of a window manager. And you can move focus around, which means shifting the cursor around. Uh, quick check was the tool we used to find the, uh, the, the axiomatic properties for a window manager. Uh, we had an initial sketch, then we had to write the quick check properties for this. And QuickCheck basically tells you when uh, the API doesn't make sense because the properties are really hard to specify. The, the semantics are unclear. So QuickCheck acts as a tool to guide you, guide you towards good APIs for complex data types like a window manager. So constantly we use this idea, if you can't specify in QuickCheck, then the code sucks and you, you will want to avoid the sucking code. Okay, uh, so here's an implementation how we modify focus. You have a stack has the current window, so windows to the left, windows to the right. You move focus up by taking the window to the left, making it the current window, the windows to the left, and then moves the current window to the right. So really simple transformation. Hopefully we'll get it right. Um, and it's guaranteed to be not empty by the type. We use types to check things like that. And yeah, this basically the simplicity of implementation again was used to guide us towards the right API for this thing. When it's beautiful to state like this, it means we probably got it right. Uh, the outer shell around this stack set data structure is a usual, the type of a central interactive application, which is a, a state with some purely functional data structure, a reader wrapper carrying around some configuration data, and IO at the bottom. We use new type driving heavily to drive all sorts of instances for things. Um, and this carries around the window manager state, receives events from the X server, modifies the stack set model, flushes it out as effects on the X server. The key logic though is all in this stack set, which is pure and quick check. And we confirm how well we did that with HPC. <laughs> okay, so how do we modify the real world? Well, we get an event, and we just call this function windows, which takes the current state, applies some function to it, focus up, to move the focus up, and then flushes it to the X server. So keeping that monadic skin very thin is the key thing. And you have no logic in the monadic stuff. Once you move into the imperative thing, you've given away the advantage that Haskell has of being able to analyze the code and reason about it. So keep that, you don't want to be tempted. Okay, configuration. Use a first class language for first class configuration. If you don't want some crappy configuration language, use a good language, Haskell. So we use Haskell for the configuration. We were very fundamentalist about this. But it turned out to be a really big win. You can write any Haskell you want in the configuration file to add any feature you want. And uh, we have type safe config files. So we also don't get reports. We don't have to write documentation for the syntax for the config files, one thing. Um, but we also get less reports of users screwing up because the compiler checks for them and then plug in the config file. Um, the trick was, though, we did it in high school and we got this extension community. We initially didn't plan for this. People just started sending each other config files. And then they started asking us to add their cool feature that they implemented into the system. Um, but Spencer and I just really complained, we didn't want to add new features. Uh, so we stuck them all in a library, then some guy came along and wrote habits for everything. We started publishing them, and we got, we didn't know what was going to happen. And now we have an awful lot of extensions. And this also happened because we used a good configuration language. It's harder to maintain discipline in this contributed code, um, because people just write their stuff and send it in. But uh, we can enforce the API to be pure, which helps keep quality up. Um, public review is one idea, so making sure everyone can see the code and can complain about it. Uh, Duncan Coops had this idea that we should publish HPC coverage for the test suite for each of the contrib modules in public, 
So you can see 0% cover for this guy and the author. He's going to be shamed into writing tests. So I think this might be a good social mechanism for the code quality. OK, so how do we make it work? The reliability toolkit. Uh, Cabal, wall, quick check, HPC. Cabal, and so it's good for reliability. You don't have to worry about your build system breaking, which used to happen a lot when we had make files for writing libraries in high school. Things were permanently broken, basically. Um, but Cabal just makes this whole thing work. We depend on a bunch of packages, and the system builds it. So that's a great idea. Uh, wall. So we turn this on always. It makes sure that people sending this code keep their, their code quality at a sort of minimum standard. Uh, especially people who don't know Haskell. They always know that like, shadowing variable names is a bad idea. And partial functions are bad. Quick check is the main tool that we use. We have a large suite of quick check properties. They all have to pass before you can even record a patch to send to us. Plus, to get them to pass, you have to also have the code type check. So no one sends us type incorrect code or code that doesn't pass this because they're not even allowed to record. Darks prevents them. Uh, the quick check properties that we then confirm how effective they are testing the code with HPC. Um, here we've got the stack set coverage. I got it to 100% on the plane on the way over. So I think Andy's happy. There's, uh, that, that's really quite nice. So the quick check properties test everything that we have logic about. Um, and it's yeah, quite possibly the only window manager with a test suite. So that's the sort of state of play before we got into this game. You don't even write tests for these things normally. Okay, what can we test? Well, you can test the API that the functions calling each other make sense. You can test things that we couldn't state in the type system. We can test with quick check, like that there are no duplicate windows in the stack set data structure. We don't, couldn't enforce that in the type, so shift it into a quick check copy that you test on every single function. Uh, moving, there are local behaviors for each function that you can specify so that moving focus around the screen shouldn't change the window ordering. That falls out as a quick check property. Uh, one way to hunt for new properties, though, I found is there are lots of idempotent and reversible functions. So functions where inserting a window and deleting it should leak in exactly the same state you started with. Uh, or switching to screen one and then screen one again leaves you in exactly the same state. These things seem to be everywhere in window managers at least. So for every function, sit down and try and work out if these things exist and you have a lot of nice properties. If they don't hold, you probably your code sucks. Okay, check and quick check with HPC. We use this. Uh, it won't, there's a tendency to write quick check properties for a function that don't test it very deeply, just to sort of say, well, I have added another 100 tests in my suite. Uh, but HPC keeps you honest. It highlights in yellow all the parts of the thing you wanted to test that you didn't actually test. So you can't sort of be too crazy about it. Uh, so what I want to do now is have the HPC run, which comes out and prints 100%, have that checked on each commit as well. So you can't add any feature without first adding a quick check property and a good one. Uh, the other things we enforce with types, so quite a few bug reports, well we had like three, uh, we were able to solve with the type system. So there were people would use, uh, they would extract the currently visible window from a workspace that was possibly empty because we had a, we had a sum type, we had, it was either empty or it was a list of windows. And people would call the, uh, the record accessor uh, even when it was empty. So listed it into the type and suddenly all those bugs went away. No one complained about their config modules failing. We had a bug relating to indexing a screen and a workspace with integers that we got around the wrong way. So we invented some new int types using new type deriving for screens and workspaces. And then uh, the compiler found all the places where we messed up the indices. And I think it was like two. But um, that was really good. So that was a bug. We lifted in the type system and went away. Uh, another one was non-empty layouts. You could define in the concrete file that there were no layouts at all to be used. So the system wouldn't work. So we can lift that into a GADT for non-empty lists. And then the user is forced to come up with a layout to get their config module to compile. So some bugs you can solve with the type systems. Those that you can't, you move into quick check properties. Quick check plus HPC. Uh, catch is another great one. This is a long-running application, so really there should be no partial functions. You should never call error. You should never call head, really, unless you're, you know. Uh, and we were sloppy. Well, I think everybody is, pretty much. There are some hard callbacks here, I'm sure about here. But uh, catch, Neil Mitchell's cover partial analysis tool, uh, 
was very useful in finding